Hi. So today I actually have a new kind of video that we haven't done before and it was actually requested a few months ago when I first talked about this book. Someone asked me to do a book and movie comparison of Under the Tuscan Sun. Kind of excited about this because I had an excuse to watch a movie because it was for you guys. So we'll start with the book. Obviously it's called Under the Tuscan Sun. It's by Francis Mays and the book was published back in 1996. So it's been out for a bit. It has a name, it has a reputation. I knew about it before I acquired the book. This is a memoir. Francis and her husband, they decide to buy a house in Italy. This house is called Brahma Sole and it's in Cortona in Tuscany. And it's just sort of a, it's a big step for them. I mean, it's a big step for anybody to buy a house in Italy who doesn't live in Italy, but um, they're from San Francisco. So that sort of long haul between the two, it's a big deal for them to buy this house. And it's also in pretty bad shape. So a lot of the book is hearing about Tuscany, hearing about Cortona, the trials and tribulations of trying to fix up this beautiful house and just the enjoyment she gets from life from being in Italy. Now her and her husband are both professors at um, a university back in California so they only get to spend summers and their like Christmas vacations in Italy so the book sort of jumps between those two doesn't really you know doesn't focus on that middle part in between when they're teaching in San Francisco it just talks about how when they get to Italy they're just like oh thank god like it's time to they just feel almost reborn in a way it's like this different attitude about life when they're in Tuscany they're just so happy to be there and it and it makes you really want to go to Tuscany. So I loved hearing the descriptions about how this house was being um, fixed up and just, you know, sort of little misadventures, the people that they run into when they're there, of course, because what is Italy without its people and its culture? So these, the different people that come and build their house, there's these Polish guys who um, do a lot of the work and she talks about how she was learning Italian and Polish at the same time when she was there because she was trying to con converse with these guys um, who were who were immigrants to Italy from Poland because they were looking for better paying jobs. And she talks about how her family comes to stay and just, and her fear of birds. She has an irrational fear of birds and just these funny little run-ins. So it's, it's filled with beautiful descriptions of Italy and also sort of this comedic edge to her experience there. Now there's one thing that a lot of travelers like that I'm not that big into. I'm not a foodie. I don't really like reading about descriptions of food. Obviously I like to eat because that keeps you from starving, but in terms of like cooking and really getting into food, that that's not me. So she has a couple chapters where she talks about summer cooking and winter cooking and gives recipes and I'm sure some people will just eat that stuff up. <laughs> but I was just sort of like, okay, and I was just reading a little bit of the description and just kept flipping because I didn't care at all. So when the books got into some super descriptions about food, I would start to lose a bit of interest just because that's so not what I care about. I care about the history and the culture and she talks a lot about the Etruscans and how they're digging, when they're redoing their yard, they keep digging up things from, you know, a hundred years to who knows how long ago. So that part was cool, but the food part just, I could have done without the food part, obviously that's part of living in another culture and another in another place is you get to experience the food, but not so much for me. I would give the book a four and a half out of five stars. It's a fantastic travel book. It'll really make you want to go to Italy and if you like food, it'll make you want to go even more. That's it for the book. Now, in terms of the film, I finished the book and I immediately started watching the film after. The film is very different. There are overarching storylines that are completely altered. Now, the movie was made in 2003. It was directed by Audrey Wells, and she has not directed anything else particularly amazing. I looked her up on IMDb and she directed Tarzan. If anybody remembers that movie, like the modern, not the old, like black and white, but the more modern version, and The Kid, and a couple other movies, but nothing like that crazy awesome. The movie starts off with Frances, so they do keep her name, um, played by Diane Lane. Her character gets a divorce from her husband. Yes, she lives in San Francisco. Yes, she's a writer and she works at a university, but it starts off with her getting a divorce from Tom. Tom is not her husband in the book, so at least that was good. They didn't make it weird by having that happen. And I can understand in a movie that to sort of 
get that romantic edge. Um, you had to have her, or in some characters, have relationships, and because, and when somebody's married and there isn't, like, there's no marital issues in this book, so if you want to make it, like, more Hollywood, you would create an issue like that. So she decided after a year, her friends give her a ticket to a gay tour in Italy, and she decides to go on it because her her, she has a she has a gay best friend, um, Patty, who also does not exist in the book, and Patty gets pregnant, and her and her girlfriend decide to stay in San Francisco, and they send Francis on this trip instead, and that's when Francis, on this trip, comes across Brahma Sole and decides to just buy it because of these particular signs that she sees, like signs from the universe, and then she buys Brahma Sole all by herself. Now. That's, you know, they still keep some of the details, like they have, they have that it's in Cortona, they know that the place is called Brahma Sole, you know, she spends a lot of the movie fixing it up. They even have the three Polish guys that she talks about in the book in the movie. They give her a couple different love interests, they kind of focus more on some of the characters than were ever focused on in the book. They talk about that quirkiness, you see that, that comedy edge, there's definitely a lot of comedy edge. There's an extra character in there who was, uh, who was the actress, the English actress from La Dolce Vita with one of the Fellini films, like they have her living in Italy and being there and she's sort of like a guide for Francis. Now she's moved on from San Francisco and decided to buy this house in Italy. Yeah, she never goes back to San Francisco by the way, she just stays in Italy, unlike in the book where her and her husband jump back and forth. This Catherine character does not exist in the book, she doesn't meet the actress who was in La Dolce Vita, and she has no friend named Patty who is a lesbian in the book. So it's they created this entirely different storyline while still mirroring some of the book. They still talk about the food, she still sees the beautiful sights. The movie is not really like the book. It keeps some essence of it, but it's not at all the same. If you're looking for a movie that follows the book well, don't watch this one because you might be a little upset. I was kind of like, what? When I started watching because it was really different and I wasn't expecting it to be that different. Now there was one thing at the end that was awesome. I can't really give it away because, you know, it's, it's like a fun part of the movie, but if you've read the book, it will mean a lot to you. You'll kind of be like, oh, I see what you did there, so. Yeah, that was that was really nice. I actually kind of cheered and clapped my hands a couple times just because I was really humored by that. So yes, the movie was enjoyable, but not nearly as enjoyable as the book. Less and I don't run a movie review channel, but I'd probably give the movie a three out of five stars if I were to, you know, be that kind of person. I rate stuff on Flickster sometimes, so you know, I'll pull that knowledge that I have. Yeah, that's it for the book movie comparison of Under the Tuscan Sun. If you guys have read the book, watched the movie, or both. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. Um, any questions also down there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.